Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. If we did in fact live on a spherical Earth, we would be able to see curvature. It would be self-evident. We could make observations and it would be obvious that we are seeing curvature. So what I'd like to do in this video is take you through how observations such as these long distance shots, which clearly demonstrate that we live on a level Earth, are interpreted to have us perceive or believe that we live on a spherical Earth. However, if we are to be truly scientific, then we have to find ways to verify the assumptions that we are making from these observations. And that should be easy enough to do with another observation. However, you've got to keep in mind here that throughout the entire history that apparently goes back more than 2,000 years of us somehow working out that we lived on a globe, no one in that history has ever actually measured any curvature in a truly scientific way. No measurement has ever been done. It has always been the conversion of perspective into an imaginary curved surface of the Earth, simply by using geometry. So I'm also going to have a look at the maths involved in that and how when we do make observations, especially across across the vast distances that we can see in these images here, we most definitely should see curvature, given the mathematical assumptions of the globe Earth model. Now, of course, one of the arguments that we often hear from globe proponents is that, well, OK, it looks flat, but that's because the Earth is so big. And so you're not going to see curvature. So again, I'm going to take us through the math mathematics of the observations, or the science, let's say, of the observations, and show how we most definitely should see curvature. If you're going to say that the Earth curves away from us just beyond the horizon at a certain distance, then I will show now how we can, we, we should be able to also see the same amount of curvature on a horizontal level. So we basically it's it's very simple. If we are to uh, believe that we live on a globe, we should be able to see curvature on the horizon, simply because the horizons are much, much wider than the distances that we are claiming or that people are claiming to see uh, evidence of curvature in front of them. It's simple. But I will, so what I would like to do is just take you through the arguments that are made by the Globe Earth proponents and how they convert these observations into this illustration of uh, curvature by giving us this kind of side-on view, changing the reference frame, basically, and applying it to a so-called model, which, of course, doesn't take into account the aspects of perspective that one must do in order to believe that we are seeing evidence of curvature when we make an observation. So here's the current world record for the longest line of sight, where uh, from one peak, another peak that's 443 kilometers away can be seen. Let's first just have a look at uh, what we're seeing here. Um, this is the peak that is 443 kilometers away. And the height is 3,867 meters, so nearly four kilometers high. And we'll see how this, this peak's height and its distance from the photographer is used as an argument and how it's explained away as being evidence of curvature. And first, though, let's just look at this uh, to 
look at the field of view that the photographer had. As you can see, it's quite a narrow field of view. Uh, they were obviously using a zoom lens. So, um, you know, this is the distance across uh, that they were seeing, as well as uh, the distance from and to. So we, we will look at the aspects of the field of view and what we should see under normal circumstances in a second. But uh, first of all, let's look at the arguments that are used by the GLOBE proponents to say that uh, to convert what we see here into this illustration of us being on a spherical Earth. It's really quite simple, actually, um, what they, the, the mistake that is made. Because again, of course, what's happening is we are making an observation. And uh, with an observation, uh, things obviously get, appear, sorry, smaller in angular size, if you like, over greater distance. And uh, so here we have uh, on um, metabunk.org these uh, vain attempts to explain away how this could somehow be possible on a spherical Earth. And someone has done the calculations here and, uh, you know, assuming um, we've got a certain radius of the Earth and all that, we have a distance of 443 kilometers here and the viewer's height uh, put into it, which is apparently 2,820 meters. And uh, what we basically get here in the, those results is um, this bulge that we should see of 3.85 kilometers or a drop indeed of 15.42 kilometers. So, you know, this, this is, they're telling us that there is a, 15 kilometer drop in elevation between the observer and the mountain that they are seeing in the distance and then we've got um, some additional calculations uh, for refraction and a bunch of assumptions there that will allow the glow proponent to magically bring um, distant objects into view that should be beyond the curve uh, but this is all these are all really kind of quite silly arguments because as I said, all they're doing is converting um, perspective into this illustration of curvature. Here we have uh, Mick West here putting up um, some image here, which uh, of course is not to scale, but uh, again, giving us this um, side on view, putting the observation onto a model. And again, we never, we never ever see this kind of curvature, do we? Uh, we never see any evidence of a bulging horizon, but we should, given the distance that we are being told, we are seeing evidence of curvature in front of us. Okay, so a lot of um, you know uh, stuff going on here. Uh, but the the interesting argument here is is ha and this is kind of really shows how perspective is converted into uh, this imaginary curve and just simply using the geometry of perspective and the argument here of course is the the taller peak peak gaspard or the, the furthest peak sorry is physically taller than one in front of it but of course in the photograph peak gaspard appears smaller than the physically smaller mountain in front of it. So we have all this um, kind of calculations and stuff based on that. And so, of course, we have this apparent drop from this line of sight to that line of sight. And this is turned into a curved surface. And here we have them putting this bulge up here. So... <clears throat> This would maybe indicate that uh, this globe proponent is attempting to uh, illustrate how the surface appears to rise up in front of us as a bulge. And then everything beyond that is now curving away into the distance. But of course, uh, this would mean that the person making the observation on this peak is not looking straight ahead or plumb 
to the center of this spherical Earth model. So this line of sight uh, should be somewhere up here, according to this model. Yeah, again, it doesn't reflect reality. This photograph was made, I'm sure, looking straight ahead. And so the photographer is, does not have a line of sight that shoots off up into the sky because they're assumed to be on a spherical Earth. Their line of sight is going directly across this flat surface, but it's, it's illustrated as being such here. So the simple fact that the further away something is, the smaller it will appear has been converted into this imaginary curve. So even though uh, the most distant peak, Peak Gaspard, is physically larger than Grand Ferrand, it will still appear smaller because it's further away. <laughs> Simple as that. But this has been totally ignored. This, you know, this observation has been converted into this model. So it's not a measurement. It is a twisting, a conversion of what we see as most definitely a level surface. So that's the argument. It's, it's irrelevant doesn't make sense, doesn't match with reality, and ignores the way we actually, the science of making an observation. Yeah, it's not a physical measurement of curvature. This is an extrapolation, an assumption, a hypothesis, not based on any, any, any actual observation of curvature, but a hypothesis based on uh, an imaginary model that uses geometry converting perspective into this geometric curve. And you'll find that, as I said just now, throughout the entire history of so-called scientific discovery, no one has ever measured curvature on the surface of the Earth, and no one has ever done any scientific confirmation or verification of these kinds of observation to give us a, an actual side-on view like we have in this model here, which of course should be possible if we are looking across a vast horizon. So now let's go and have a look at how much of the horizon we should be seeing in any given observation and just how much curvature we should be able to see across the horizon if we are to assume that we're living on a spherical Earth. Here's another example of the kind of side-on view we are given in these illustrations that model observations made on a spherical Earth. It does do the same as what we saw just now. In It converts the perspective of an observation into an imagined curve. It does highlight, though, that um, there is disagreement or there isn't a cohesive standard way of illustrating how observations are made on a so-called spherical Earth. I would say that this particular illustration is slightly more realistic than the ones we saw just now, but it still doesn't account for how we actually observe the world around us in a realistic way. Uh, just now we saw this assumption that the surface of the Earth physically bulges and rises up in front of the observer or between the observer and the distant mountain uh, with the Metabunk model. In this particular illustration um, we don't have that. It's slightly more realistic because we have uh, the observation point here and a line of sight or eye level across this astronomic horizon which is perpendicular to the plum. Of course it's assumed that this, that this plum line goes down towards the center of a spherical earth um, and here we, we're not having that occur uh, at an angle here. We've still got this plum going down here. So what we do have though is again just this conversion of the uh, effects of perspective or the fact that uh, things appear smaller as they get further away from us into this geometric curve. And because we are relying on geometry, we end up with some very accurate modeling. So there is no disputing the calculations and the accuracy of the numbers to several decimal points that can be made when you're making these models because after all what you're dealing with is 
circles and tangent lines and angles. So it's all a case of uh, ratios and you can um, make these distances uh, to scale and appear to be very, very accurate, but they still do not reflect reality. So in this case, we don't have anything that would um, match with the observation of looking across the surface where it bulges up uh, in front of us. We just have the locally flat surface at first being parallel to eye level and then curving down and away from the observer. So it doesn't really illustrate what we're seeing. However, um, what we do also get from this is across a distance of uh, 44.5 kilometers, um, uh, curvature that should be about 155.815 meters. So if we did, in fact, look across the surface of the Earth and we had a horizon with a distance across of just 44 miles, I'm sorry, kilometers, then we should see quite clearly 155 meters of curvature. But let's now go and have a look at just how wide the horizon should be given the distance that we can see. And it should then be evident that we should in fact see curvature everywhere we look if we are on a spherical Earth. So we're talking about the way the field of view expands as we look across a greater distance. As illustrated here, as if looking through a camera lens, the farther we see in front of us, the wider and wider this horizontal field of view becomes. And given the mathematics for the globe model and the way this works in reality, we should most definitely see curvature right in front of our eyes across the horizontal field of view, regardless of any assumptions about how far we should see or any faith in curvature beyond where we can actually see. Basically, any claims of curvature in front of us should also be verified with um, measurements and observations of curvature across the horizontal field of view as well because ultimately we are talking about the notion that we live on a spherical earth that curves away from us in all directions not a cylinder that is only curving away from us in front of us at some point that we can't actually see. We should be able to see curvature. So this illustration is of course for a camera which uh, depending on the kind of lens and, and various other things will increase or de decrease the horizontal field of view. In the shots of the mountain that we saw just now of course uh, uh, the photographer was using a zoom lens and we ended up with a very narrow field of view uh, as we see here illustrated on this map. Uh, but actually in, under normal circumstances without zoom the field of view would be much much wider than that. Um, so if we now compare that to how our binocular vision works compared to a camera the field of view for a human is actually quite wide. Uh, here we can see on this illustration on the left that uh, the angle either side of the uh, central line of sight is 62 degrees. So we have a total uh, angle of the field of view that is 124 degrees. And so, of course, you can see how much uh, of a greater distance that we should see across the horizontal field of view, the further we can see in front of us. So let's go and model that and see what kind of results we get. So if we just take that 120 degrees of the expanding horizontal field of view and illustrate it like this in a top-down view of an observer at point A, looking straight ahead to point D, which for the sake of argument here is 10 kilometers away from the observer, uh, we can see an, a problem immediately with the difference in the distance that we can see in front of us compared to the distance that we can see across our field of view. 
So the globe Earth proponent will model this um, forward-facing uh, line of sight of 10 kilometers and convert it into a side-on view and then tell us that um, there is uh, curvature of whatever it's supposed to be with the globe Earth model occurring between the observer and point D at 10 kilometers. But of course, what we have here, if I could just, if I just put a line across here, between point B and C, we have a distance that is much greater than the distance that we can see in front of us. Uh, you can see that uh, off to the left and to the right, we have a distance of almost another 10 kilometers either side. So the total distance across this horizontal field of view is already approaching twice the distance that uh, we can see in front of us. And if we took these points up to the same distance away as um, uh, the, the point in front of us, we'd get this massive, massively wide field of view, many times greater than uh, the point at which people would be claiming they are seeing evidence of curvature in front of them because of the limit of the distance we can see. So let's go and have a look at this with a calculator that will calculate the distance that we can see across the horizon compared to the distance that we are seeing in front of us. We can use this arc length calculator to put in the degrees of the field of view and the distance that we can see and then we'll get the results of how far across the horizon should be that we can see. Now these are the same kinds of calculations that are used by engineers for uh, radar or transmission towers to see how far uh, they will be able to make their transmissions. So this is, you know, this is the real scientific approach to uh, calculating what we should see in those observations. Uh, so, uh, just to be clear what we're doing here, um, here is um, the circle and this uh, green segment here would represent that expanding field of view. And so we put the angle in here and the radius would be the distance at which uh, we could see that, that point in front of us. And from those numbers we then get, uh, uh, we can make calculations about the, the area that we're covering in this sector. We get the arc length, uh, which is this segment of the circle here on the outside. And we can also get the chord length going across between those two points. So um, let's just do it for now with that um, 120 degree field of view. And in the illustration I had uh, up just now, it was just a 10 kilometer uh, uh, point in the distance. But we can see already that um, the chord length um, would be 17 kilometers and the arc length would be 20 kilometers. So twice as much as the distance that we can see in front of us, yeah? So we, we can even be very kind here and we'll make this uh, 90 degree field of view horizontally and we'll put in the distance of those mountains that we saw in uh, the record-breaking views which was uh, 443 kilometers into the distance. So even with this much smaller 90 degree field of view um, from a camera uh, looking straight ahead and seeing a peak that's 443 kilometers away the chord length uh, is 626 kilometers and the arc length is 695 kilometers. So let's take this chord length. So again, this is the distance across the horizon from left to right that we can see through a camera lens that gives us a 90 degree field of view looking at uh, a mountain that's 443 kilometers away. Let's put that into the Earth curvature calculator. And I've already done it, but we, we can do it again if you like, just to be sure. But the result we get is a staggering 30 kilometers of curvature that we should be able to see across our horizontal view 
if we can see something that is 443 kilometers away in the distance. Yeah, These are the kinds of calculations that those who wish to model observations on a globe should be doing. And then you'll realize that when we look across the surface of the Earth and we see a great distance in front of us, whatever that distance is in front of us, you must multiply that by three or four times or use a, an arc length calculator to see how much curvature you should see on the horizontal. And this will tell us that the fact that we do not see any curvature on the surface of the Earth is proof enough that there is no curvature. Because if we can see things 443 kilometers away, we should see a bend in the horizon that's equivalent to 30 kilometers on the horizontal. And this is why I always demand evidence of curvature with this side on view. It should be readily available. It should be easy to observe even across a field of view that is only a few kilometers across, we should be able to see curvature. We don't because it doesn't exist. Thank you very much. Click subscribe and the bell icon if you'd like to receive notifications of new videos from Phuket Word.